What's up guys? I have Google's flagship device, the Nexus 10, and I have Microsoft's Surface tablet. I'm going to be pitting these guys together into an ultimate deathmatch. Now rather than making this huge long video, what I've done is I've broken the series down into several parts. So if there's a particular subject or scene that you want to take a look, go ahead and look down at the description. I've labeled them, so maybe if there's one, for example, performance is something that you want to know, then go ahead and jump right into that scene. So the very first part, we're going to be talking about web browsing. Well, why is this the very first part? That is because when people buy tablets, reports say that web browsing is the number one thing that is done. So I want to show you guys right out of the box what to expect from the user experience and let's see which one comes out on top so let's get started okay guys so I have both tablets running at full brightness and I want to talk about what you get out of the box the first impressions kind of experience that one can expect when they buy either of these tablets so the Google Nexus 10 is running Chrome as one of the default browsers while over here on the Microsoft Surface you have Internet Explorer so right off the bat I can tell you that even though this sports a higher PPI display the Google in itself looks very fuzzy compared to the next I mean to the Surface tablet and I'll talk about that later down on my review when we get to displays but just kind of note here while we're doing web browsing so let's say somebody is searching for some images here on Google let's go ahead and type in natures okay just kind of a uh, I figure nature would be the appropriate um, matter. Let's go ahead and push on images. Let's do the same over here for the Nexus uh, 10. Right off the bat, you can see the experience is completely different on both tablets. For one, on the Nexus 10, you're getting only four images across, while over here you're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven images, okay? So right off the bat, you can see that over here, and I know it's going to be very hard to look through this video, so you're going to have to take my word on for it, is that on the uh, Surface tablet, everything looks a lot crisper compared to over here on the Nexus 10. And again, we'll talk about the, the whole display later, so you know, go ahead and click down on the link below when we get into that subject, why it, why it looks like that. Um, it's not that this is bad, it's just uh, we'll talk about PPI later. Okay, so let's find a high-res image. So in, in order to do it here, all we need to do is under search tools, okay, any size, and we're going to go ahead and push on large, okay. Now we have to do the same here. As you can see, it's not the same over here. You don't have search tools on the Nexus 10. It is a completely different version. So let's go ahead and uh, push on it over here, size, and then it from here it changes to over here, which is kind of different. I don't really like that. I was over here, now I have to jump over here. So anyhow, just again, my first initial impressions, okay? So we've switched them to large. They're both large and large. Okay, so now let's try and find an image that is more or less uh, the same. So I found an image that is the same. So we're going to go ahead and push on both of these images to kind of give you what type of experience you can expect. And right off the bat, I can tell you, and I don't know if you can see this. That's kind of odd. It's not centered. Um, this looks super, super sharp. I mean, the detail is amazing compared to this. this. is very, very fuzzy. And just so, for what it's worth, this is a 1600 by 1200 image, as you can see there. Now, one thing to note is that you're getting the mobile version over here compared to the Surface tablet where you're getting the full web experience. Now, this is more like you would see on your personal computer, Mac, or, you know, your my Windows desktop. And again, the clarity is something that I can tell you right now, if I called random people, 20 of them, and told them which one looks better, hands down, this is by far way better, and I hope that translates on video. I might have to do a couple of still shots for you guys. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let's jump into a different website. Now to save time, I've preloaded The Verge so you guys can see, and right off the bat, you'll notice that the Nexus 10 fills up the whole entire area, while you over here on the Surface tablet, there's a little bit of space. Everything is a little bit more compressed, which is actually not a bad thing, because if you pay attention, and again, you're going to have to take my word for this, on this, is that The Verge 
over here looks really, really sharp compared to over here. It's very pixelated. Again, because we're dealing with images. See, websites are based on lots of images, so this is trying to upscale everything, while this over here is rendering at its normal resolution. So because of because of this high PPI display, everything, all, mostly all the images are going to look very pixelated. However, when you look at for example, features, reviews, products, same thing over here. This is where you really get to appreciate you don't see any pixelation at all because this is actually being rendered um, compared to the images which are not completely, they're already pre-rendered just being upscaled if that makes sense. And again, we'll talk about this during the display uh, session later. Now, let's talk about user experience. As you can see, the Surface tablet is buttery smooth. I would say that it rivals, if not better, than the iPad because the iPad seems to have that really, really smooth. Look at this. It's just bam, 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 really fast. On demand, it's almost like you have like glue on your fingers and it just responds immediately. Let's see how it the surface handles that. As you can see it's not very smooth. There's lag, you know, as I go down, there's about I don't know, a half a millisecond or so of lag. Uh, let's check check to the take a look at pinch to zoom. Whoa. Not as responsive as over here as you can see. It um you can see the huge difference. So right off the bat, I can tell you that the experience on the Surface tablet is by far probably the best experience that I have seen on any, well, see, on any mobile platform. It, it really shows you over here with, uh, on the Surface how great um, web browsing can be. Now, one thing to know, let's go back to the top, is that, let me go ahead and shrink this. You can see a lot more with the Surface tablet. Right here on, uh, I hope I'm zoomed out all the way. I think I am. Let's go ahead just to make sure. I'm going to go ahead and reload this. You can see over here on the Surface tablet that everything is, there we go, sorry. Everything is more legible. In other words, you could see a lot more compared to over here on the uh, Nexus 10. The Nexus 10 ends right here where it says David Pierce a little bit below. Uh, Black Friday over here. I'm getting on the verge returns now. Let's go ahead and switch it over and I'm gonna pause it for a second So I went ahead and rotated both tablets so you can see now. Let's go ahead and uh, compare you can see that that the Nexus 10 has a uh, a rendering issue. It takes a while to catch up compared to the Surface tablet. It is super smooth. I mean, it's like night and day. Um, but one of the things to know is when we shifted the uh, rotation, how much more you can see over here on the Surface tablet compared to, say, the uh, Nexus 10. This is more like a magazine. This feels like I'm holding an actual book. Um, again, you could see, even though this has a higher resolution, you could still see a lot more over here. Right, right over here, it ends with this uh, iFixit teardown. The image is cut off, or right about where the image is getting cut off. So you get this much more. Um, once again, the uh, Surface tablet, you can see a lot more. Renderings a lot better. But let's go ahead and take a look at other websites. So I'm going to go ahead and load YouTube, and I want you guys to see that this is YouTube.com and YouTube.com, so it's 100% fair, and you guys can try this yourself. And immediately you'll notice that I'm taken to the mobile version of the YouTube site over here compared to over here I'm getting the full web experience. Now I know what you're going to say, Armando, there's a setting that you can request desktop site. I get it. I know that. But we're talking about right out of the box. I shouldn't have to do that. And remember, we're talking about the experience. Over here, without having to touch anything, I'm getting the full web experience over here. I have to, you know, change those settings. So as you can see, we're going to go ahead and look at a video and see how both compare. So I'm going to go ahead and play both videos at the same time. Over here, the Microsoft Surface tablet and over here, the Microsoft Surface tablet. I'm going to go ahead and push these at the same time. And what you'll see is that this will load the native YouTube application, which is not a bad thing, it's actually really nice. This, you get the full web experience. However, there is still a slight difference. Even though this was made by Google and this is the uh, Google application, there's a quite a bit of difference. And I'm going to have to stop the camera to show you what I mean. So I went ahead and preloaded a video so that you can see the different experience. This is of course the web version and of course this is running the Android YouTube app. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, push play here. Now there's a scene here where I talk about 
um, one of my other reviews and I say go ahead and click here. Now if I do that, nothing happens. This is something that Android users and even iOS users know that whenever somebody leaves an annotation, uh, there's nothing that you can do. However, on the Microsoft Surface tablet, because it is running the full web experience, when I go ahead and say click here, it'll take me to that review. So once again, you know, a lot of times I look at videos and I, you know, people say, hey, go ahead and click here or do this. And I'm not able to do that with the Android device. However, over here on the Microsoft Surface, remember we're talking about experience. Yeah, I get the experience that I know of and I am accustomed to. So I went ahead and loaded Facebook because let's face it, this is one of the most visited websites ever that people use. So let's take a look at how both devices handle Facebook. Once again, you could see a lot more and that's something that you're going to see throughout any website. Uh, right here it uh, cuts off, uh, right here uh, where it says uh, Christy and then of course I've seen, I could see a lot more. Uh, pinch to zoom once again, very very smooth. The whole uh, uh, web browsing experience, Internet Explorer is, uh, I know what you guys are going to say, no, it's awesome. It really is and Microsoft did a hell of a good job. Uh, look at this. Let's see how it uh, performs over here on the Nexus 10. Not bad. I can't say it's as smooth as the Surface tablet, but it works okay. Um, that's weird. For whatever reason, it's just, uh, it doesn't let me zoom but only up to here. That's very odd. Let's go ahead and compare that. That's something I just noticed that right now. Let's go to the very top. And it only lets me zoom like 20%. Over here, I can zoom. That's really odd, huh? Something to note there, guys. Um, didn't see that before. But you can see the difference between update status, fully uh, zoomed in compared to over here. Uh, pretty big difference. So very interesting. So as you can see, once again, it's the browsing experience on the Surface uh, tablet is really, really good. One thing to note, though, is, and I know you can do it with Android, is uh, get rid of the, the bar down here. And I kind of like that uh, Internet Explorer automatically does that. Of course, you do have the soft keys here that take up some room. And over here, you're just, you're just getting a full, uh, basically using the whole screen real estate. So I went ahead and loaded the Engadget website, and I clicked on this Nintendo Wii U review. Uh, one thing you'll notice right off the bat is that this supports Flash. Android devices no longer have Flash support. So you'll see these cool animations and whenever you visit a Flash website, you will be able to see, uh, of course, all of the Flash content. So for what it's worth. Let's go ahead and uh, browse through and see. Let's go ahead and uh, push on this image gallery. Let's go ahead and find the same one over here. Let's go ahead and do it at the same time, kind of give you the experience that you can expect on both devices. So right off the bat, again, you'll notice that you can see so much more on the Surface tablet and how everything is blown out over here. You could see the left arrow, however, when you go over here, you can't see a right arrow. So you really can't, oh there it is, it's like kind of hidden. So right off the bat, you can see it's, it's a more of a cumbersome experience over here on the Android device compared to the uh, Surface tablet, which I can easily just go back and forth. Let's go ahead and uh, push on these images and see what happens. I'm having really bad internet connection right now. Um, it's kind of sort of raining, so I don't know if my devices are going to work. Doo -doo -doo. So it seems like in gadget sites it's kind of running slow, so I went ahead and uh, went to The Verge instead. So let's go ahead and look at the website over here. So one of the things you'll notice is that they have this cool little console where you can kind of jump to. And I believe it starts. That's one thing I noticed that whenever there's video or uh, certain images, you can't scroll down. You'd have to do it this way. So you guys should try this, see? Right here, like this is a video. You can't scroll down. That's one thing I've noticed on all Android devices that's really bothered me. We'll go ahead and try that over here. Not a problem. So you can see, whenever there's video, you cannot scroll for whatever reason. Okay, the video started over here. I didn't want to do that. Uh, but let's go ahead and start that video. You can see a lot of lag in the, no matter what browser, it, this, uh, this problem seems to occur. Let's go ahead and uh, push on play see if there's any differences. Go ahead and play over here. So I'm not sure if this is the HTML5 or Flash. I'd have to take a look at that. But more or less, you do have controls down here. I don't know if they will come up. Okay, there you go. Yeah, you have to push. This is kind of nice to kind of hide. And uh, this on the side seems to... Let's go ahead and leave the video playing. Uh, both of them stay. You can kind of jump to 
whichever section you want you can see right here same thing with over here on the Nexus 10 so that's kind of nice both the login join also remain on top which is part of the uh, coding that they've done so really really cool so in this last round we're gonna be talking about flash let's go ahead and load a flash site kinda like this little keypad over here that Microsoft has done sort of a standard keyboard to advance Dot com is a flash website of course they have a mobile version but how good is flash on the surface tablet for those of you that are interested and it works really good pinch to zoom I mean this is running flash 100% and I can tell you right now from my experience when Android did have flash this is night and day um, I actually believe that Microsoft could have been the company to say flash so this there you go if you are interested in a surface tablet flash runs amazing so I'm sitting the Google Nexus 10 out mainly because it has all of the Google products and I want to make sure that you guys understand and know that the Microsoft Surface tablet is able to run Google Chrome and all of the applications. As you can see here I have my Google tab and this brings me up to my Google I guess you could say home. I can go ahead and push on applications and I have all of my Gmail, Calendar, Google Plus and basically everything that I want. I can even use voice search which I'll show you guys right now. Microsoft. There it goes. Does the Google search? So it's something that you know. If you're a hardcore Google diehard fan, um, don't let that steer you away because you do get all of your Google stuff here too. So round one is over and we have a clear winner, the Microsoft Surface Tablet. So if you're looking for a device and are going to spend most of your time web browsing, hands down, the Microsoft Surface Tablet is the way to go. It knocked Android out on the first round, but remember this is just round one. Also pair this bad boy with one of these keyboard docks and you have the ultimate web browsing experience. Guys, I hope you enjoyed part one of this series. Stay tuned for part two, where we'll be talking about displays, PPI, does it even matter? I don't know, stay tuned for part two. I've left those links down below. Thanks again for watching. If you like my channel, please subscribe. If you wanna follow me on Twitter and Google+, I've left those links below. This is going to be a good one. I think I'm gonna go fire up that popcorn machine. Adios.